decision of the president, mm -hmm. a policy decision that is lawful, does the Attorney General have the authority to direct the Department of Justice to defy the President's order? I don't know whether the Attorney General has the authority to do that or not, but I don't think it would be a good idea, and that's not what I did in this case. Well, are you familiar with 8 U.S.C. Section 1182? Not off the top of my head, no. Well, it, it, it is the binding statutory authority for the executive order that you refused to implement and that led to your termination. So mm -hmm. it, it certainly is a relevant and not a terribly obscure statute. Mm -hmm. By the express text of the statute, it says, quote, whenever the president finds that the entry of any alien or of any class of aliens into the United States would be detrimental to the interests of the United States, he may by proclamation and for such period as he shall deem necessary suspend the entry of all aliens or any class of aliens as immigrants or non-immigrants or impose on the entry of aliens any restrictions he may deem appropriate. Would you agree that that is broad statutory authorization? I would and I am familiar with that and I'm also familiar with an additional provision of the INA that says no person shall receive preference or be discriminated against in issuance of a visa because of race, nationality, or place of birth that I believe was promulgated after the statute that you just quoted. And that's been part of the discussion with the courts with respect to the INA, is whether this more specific statute trumps the first one that you just described. The, the, but there, my there, concern was not an INA concern here. It rather was a constitutional concern, whether or not this, um, the executive order here violated the Constitution, specifically with the Establishment Clause and equal protection and due process. There is no doubt the arguments you laid out are arguments that we can expect litigants to bring, partisan litigants who disagree with the policy decision of the President. I would note on January 27, 2017, the Department of Justice issued an official legal decision, a determination by the Office of Legal Counsel, mm -hmm. that the executive order, and I'll quote from the opinion, the proposed order is approved with respect to form and legality. That's a determination from OLC on January 27th that it was legal. Three days later, you determined, using your own words, that although OLC had, had opined on legality, it had not addressed whether it was, quote, wise or just. And I also, in that same directive, Senator, said that I was not convinced it was lawful. I also made the point that the office of OLC looks purely at the face of the document, and again, makes a determination as to whether there is some set of circumstances under which some portion of that EO would be enforceable, would be lawful. They importantly do not look outside the face of the document. And in this particular instance, particularly where we were talking about a fundamental issue of religious freedom, not the interpretation of some arcane statute, but religious freedom, it was appropriate for us to look at the intent behind the president's actions, and the intent is laid out a in his statement. Final, very, very brief question. Mm -hmm. In the over 200 years of the Department of Justice history, mm -hmm. are you aware of any instance in which the Department of Justice has formally approved the legality of a policy, and three days later, the Attorney General has directed the Department not to follow that policy and to defy that policy? I'm not, but I'm also not aware of a situation where the Office of Legal Counsel was advised not to tell the Attorney General about it until after it was